Oh, hi, it's Paul Slackis again from Good News Planet. I have two of the farmers who we were just speaking about. So first we have Leighton uh, Cooley, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay, and Leighton's from, uh, let's see here, Georgia. I'm from Georgia, a small town in uh, the central part of the state. Aha, uh -huh, okay, and Ryan Van Holzier? Veldhuizen. All right, I didn't do too well there, all right. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a good name, and you're from Minnesota. Yes, I'm from a small town called Edgerton, Minnesota. It's in the southwest corner of the state. So what, now what, what, what kind of uh, farming do you do there in Minnesota? Uh, we raise, uh, raise a lot of hogs, and then we also do some grain farming as well. Uh -huh. In that, I think what, Minnesota has a lot, of, a lot of lakes or something like that, and, uh, and it's a little bit cold. Is, uh, is that a good climate to, uh, to make uh, good hogs? Yeah, yeah, it is the land of 10,000 lakes. Um, I find it works out very well to raise hogs there. Uh, the winter climate kind of gives us a break from the disease. Some diseases it makes worse, some diseases it makes easier, but for the most part, it makes for a very nice climate. So how do you, uh, I mean, your, your family's been in, the, in this industry for some time? Yes. Yeah. Um, I am fourth generation, and my dad is the one who really got started um, big into hogs. Uh -huh. So what, you know, that you're in a family business, did you as a young man, uh, were you working in the industry, and did you think that later on you would continue to do that? Yeah. Yeah, I knew from a young age that I wanted to farm. You know, it, it starts already with farm kids. It seems like it's automatically in your blood. And I can remember vividly as a, as a young kid playing toys and thinking, I want to grow up and be just like Daddy. All right. Well, that, and, and you are, yes? Uh, yes, I, I think I am. So, uh, so what are some of those things that you see in the future that you'd like to add to the, to the farm? Uh, I'd like to continue the, the forward motion of the, of the farm. My dad, uh, my grandparents, and my dad have done a very good job of progressing the farm, and I'd like to make it continue and make it viable for the next generation if I'm ever to have kids someday. Oh, that's good. And did you think you were going to become a movie star uh, at any point here? Not in my wildest dreams did I think I was going to be involved in something like this. No, I said a movie star. I mean, you know, there are going to be people that are going to want your autograph and say, you know, I saw you there and blah, blah, blah. I don't really feel like a movie star, really. I, uh, I feel like I, I was given... Just an, at the premiere. Well, yeah, I feel like I was given an opportunity <laughs> here, and uh, I hope I can represent an industry well. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Uh, humble. Humble guy. All right. So, uh, well, uh, any other kinds of things you want to say about having, though, been in front of a camera while you do what you do? Was that uncomfortable, or was it uh, a good feeling? And how, how did your... Do you have a family and stuff? How did they feel about it? Well, it took, uh, you know, we had uh, several family discussions before we decided that we were going to go ahead with this project. Um, and, yeah, at first when you take a camera around, it, it gets a little unnerving, but eventually you do get used to it. And, uh, yeah, you know, it was, it was pretty easy to do because they literally followed me around in my day-to-day -day life doing exactly what I do every day. That's what that director said. He said, you know, he, he put the camera there and he just hung out. And whatever you were doing, uh, he was going to... Uh, you know, capture it. That's exactly what he did. Every once in a while, they may have gotten in the way, but but uh, <laughs> you adapt. And how the hogs uh, ask them to move? Yeah, yeah, yes. It was it was more like the the personnel asked them to move. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> All right. Great. All right. So let's talk about Georgia. Um, uh, so where uh, actually are you located? How far from Atlanta? Let's I actually see. live in a small town of Roberta. It's right in the central portion of the state. It's, we're about 90 minutes from uh, south of Atlanta. Uh-huh. Okay. And your family also has uh, been in uh, farming for some time? Yes, sir. I'm actually a fourth-generation uh, poultry farmer. I'm second generation on my farm, on our farm, uh, that my mom and dad started back in the mid-'80s. Uh huh. Okay, and uh, similar kinds of questions. Uh, uh, did you think you would go into a family business? Uh, you know, there was a time growing up. Of course, I, I grew up loving agriculture, um, loving being on the farm, enjoyed it, uh, loved the outdoors. And there also there was a time in high school when I really got involved in sports, really enjoyed sports. Um, the poultry industry wasn't doing real good in our area at the time. So when I went to college, I actually had the opportunity to go play college football. And I really just wanted to come back home and be a, a teacher and a coach. I majored in business education so that I could come back and teach and uh, be a coach and maybe do a little farming on the side. But the more I was away from the farm, the more I wanted to be back on it. And so after my freshman year of college, I wanted to come back home and farm. So what does a farm give to you personally, would you say? You know, there's a lot of things. Um, 
gosh, that the farm gives to you. The biggest thing for me is the lifestyle. You know, of course, it, it's it's a it, it's a job. It provides uh, my family and I a living. It provides my mom and dad a living, and and my wife and I and two kids a living. But it also gives us a lifestyle that you know you can't really put a price of income on. There's always days that you know every farmer wishes they they worked a few less hours and made a little bit more money. But I have a three-year-old and a two-year-old son at home that that. They just, you know, the, being able to raise them on the farm and see the way that they interact and love to be with animals and on the tractors the same way that I did, you know, 30, 25, 30 years ago is, is priceless. And, and you just, you enjoy it and love it. So uh, what were they filming uh, at, at your farm? What were the kinds of things they took back or that are in the movie? Uh, basically, you know, what the, the cool thing about it, when James showed up, you know, you, you're kind of, we're thinking, you know, as a farm family, we're kind of wondering what he's what he's wanting to capture, kind of what's on his mind, what are his thoughts. And he showed up, got out, his crew introduced themselves, and uh, we said, James, what do you want to see? And he said, I don't know, what do you do? Or what were you planning to do? And and we went to work, and that's what he wanted to see. But several of the things, um, good parts in the movie, we actually uh, showed a bird placement when we get the baby chicks in to our farm the day that they're hatched. And it's something that, you know, if um, if my wife's off work or if the kids are with me, they're all involved with and our whole family's kind of involved with it. It's, it's, the, it's the beginning of a new flock of chicks, so it's always an exciting time. It's, it's like the beginning of a um, of our our flock or our crop that time and so um that's a, a neat part on the movie another part is um basically when uh, we have a family event we we're a large family um of course my sisters and and mom and dad but then aunts uncles we're just a really close family all the way around and uh we had a, a good time at a at a cookout that we we generally do you know every couple of months and uh had a lot of fun with that so it just shows our family interacting and uh, the way we enjoy spending time with one another all right. Well, uh, it's a pleasure to speak to, to both of you, and uh, I can't wait to see the movie. And, oh, looking uh, forward to you seeing uh, it. And, uh, and uh, speak to the other farm farmers. Is, is, is your life uh, early, to, early to bed and early to rise? Is, it, is that a, you know, you think a farmer gets up at, uh, at dawn, the crack of dawn. Do you have to do that? Well, you know, sometimes, yeah. But, you know, the old adage, early to bed, early to wise. Early early to bed, early to rise makes a farmer what healthy, wealthy, and wise. I'm still working on the wealthy and the wise part. <laughs> so, you know, there are times, though, yeah, that, that our job is not confined at all to an eight-hour day. Um, there are times that we have to get up in the middle of the night, you know, to address things. There are times that we have to leave out pretty early in the morning. You may not get back till late at night. But there's also days that uh, – you know, we can be at our kids' ball games in the middle of the day and, and uh, interact with them, and, you know, it just offers great opportunities for that. Uh-huh. Ryan, you see it the same, same, the same way? Yeah, absolutely. When, when an emergency happens in the middle of the night, there's no questioning whether you get up and go or not. There's no set hours. And like Leighton said, it, it offers you freedom to do as you need to do. Some days you start early, some days you don't have to start as early, and you're going to work later. So basically you find a good stopping point at night, and that's when you're done. <laughs> 